Welcome to Utter Punts. I'm your off-season host, Oli. Today, we're starting a new series, Fan Representative. We've got the first fan on board, a Miami Dolphins fan. So we're looking for 31 other fans of the 31 other teams that aren't the Dolphins. If you'd like to participate in the video, let us know in the comments below or on our Instagram, at UK, and we'll get you involved. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome my good mate, who I met through American football. Taylor, welcome to the show, mate. Thank you very much. So what I wanted to ask first is, how did you get into the NFL, mate? Because it's not that common in uh, Britain, not that popular, obviously. So what made you get into it? Yeah, no, not at all. It's uh, the amount of people who just speak to and they're like, what is that? It's crazy. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, my dad was born in Orlando, so he just sort of grew up and, you know, when he was born, the Dolphins were the only team in Florida, so naturally supported them. And then, like when I was a little kid, like you know, like five, six, whatever, didn't wasn't aware of it. Didn't my dad didn't really talk of it. And then I, I sort of like just discovered it on my own, like just through the internet, like watching clips, like like hardest hits in American football stuff like that. And then sort of just got into it a little bit, and then started talking about it. And then my dad like sort of started talking about it to me as well, because obviously he was into it. Um, probably not as much as he used to be. Like he'd watch the Super Bowl the playoffs every year, but he wouldn't like completely follow the season. And then I sort of, sort of uh, got into it, and uh, now we both watch pretty much every game together, and it's it's really good. Yeah, yeah, it's really good, man. It's the same for me. Like me and my old man and my uncle, we watch the Vikings games together, so it's like a family thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So. Um... I met you, just for the people watching to know, through American yeah. football. I play linebacker uh, for an under-19s team called the Samwell Steelers in the West Midlands. Tay is also on that team. He uh, plays quarterback, which some would argue is more important. But we always come one-on-one -on -one with each other. Obviously, my job's to hit him. Uh, but he's always fucking red-shirted for the last three years, so I don't think I've been, a I've been allowed to, which is fine. I'll just take out on the running back. But um, what... How did you learn about British American football? Because there is a whole league, BAFTA, which a lot of people don't know about. Why did you start it? And what, what's it been like since you've started developing as a quarterback? Um, well, I used to play rugby when I was younger. And then I, uh, I broke my arm, kind of just stopped playing. Like, uh, you know, I just, I just didn't really want to play a contact sport, got a little bit bored of it. Um, so I just never went back. And then a couple of years later, like three, four years later, I was just, you know, that's where I got like properly into American football. And I just kind of like searched up, like, oh, I wonder if like Britain has any teams, like just on the off chance. And like loads of lists, like Baffa came up. I was like, oh, okay. It's like, this is actually a thing. I started looking into it. Um, but I could only find like Worcester is kind of near me. Had an adult team. I was like, that's no good. I was 16 at the time. Yeah. And then just sort of stumbled across the Black Country Vipers at Stourbridge, just down the road. So I was like, contacted them, got into it. And then, yeah, the rest is history, I guess. Yeah, well, that's how, that's how we met. That was your rookie season. Yeah. And uh, I'd had one season under my belt, uh, under 16s for the San Juan Steelers. But at the time, they didn't have an under 19s team. So I had to transfer to the Black Country Vipers. And uh, that's how we met. And the thing is, when we're training, obviously, offense and defense split into two different areas and you learn different things. You have to know the other one. What, why is it like learning how to read a defense and trying to av avoid getting hit and trying to make that complete pass? How do you learn that? What, what was the hardest part of it? I mean, the rookie year, obviously, the Vipers weren't the best team. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, well, well, I'd say it was probably a very good rookie year. Like to start out, learn the game. All the coaches are brilliant. It, it was a great team to be a part of. Great group of guys, um, and like we, no one was like angry that we lost. Like we just had a good time on the field. It was yeah. good. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It was good to learn the game, but the quarterback position that team, I didn't learn a whole lot. <laughs> um, I didn't really have like there was not much time in the pocket. Many plays were broken, so it was a bit just chaotic all over the place. Then uh, we both, Vipers kind of 
shut down. You know, it just kind of ended after that season. Um, yeah. So we moved to uh, Samwell, both of us and the rest of the Vipers guys. Um, sort of Vipers and Steelers merger, really. Um, yeah. And then, so I had a year of experience under my belt, sort of, you know, understood the game like now, getting confident, you know, working on my technique. And then, yeah, I think, I don't think we'll top that Samwell season again. Went to the national championship, lost by four points, but it was a great experience going through all the playoffs and everything. So, yeah. It, it was really close, man. We should have, we should have had it, but you know, yeah. that's American football for you. Sometimes, you know, tight games, you just, you just don't get that across the line. But do you think, okay, that first season, we had some games that were also very tight. Unfortunately, we were on the opposite end of them. Do you think having to deal with that adversity, less time in the pocket, maybe getting hit more probably, do you think that helped you when you came into a team that had a bit of a better structure, a bit more time with the ball, time to develop your technique and training? Do you think that adversity helped you? Oh, yeah, massively, of course. Um, you know, just I was used to getting rid of the ball, making plays within like two seconds, three seconds, then come to the Steelers, you know, and I've got suddenly like four or five seconds. Just like I was already making the plays in those two or three seconds. Now I've suddenly got an extra couple of seconds as well. It just gives me more and more and more time. It just like the game just slowed down a lot more for me. So it just became easier, easier and easier as it went on. Um, but yeah, so that, that was a great season last season, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm always going to be positive. I think we can replicate it and go further, even though we're in a higher division. But, you know... I get what you're saying. Like last last season, what was it? We were eight and zero in the regular season in, in the um, Midlands Division Two. Uh, or, or sorry, seven wins and one draw. Was it? Yeah, one draw. That one draw, man, always gets me. But um, yeah, like like being the quarterback is the most important position on the pitch. I think we can all agree. Yeah. So speaking of quarterbacks. To a tag of Iloa, you know, moving on to Miami Dolphins. He's there in the background. Right next to it, you've got Dan Marino, the arguably one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. What's your thoughts on Tua as a player? And what's your thoughts on him getting paid potentially fifty million dollars a year? I think Tua when he came into the Oh. Well, he didn't like it. <laughs> that's what I think of Tua. Um <laughs> Try and stick that back on. <laughs> that might not be. But anyway, yeah. I think to his first, his rookie season, his sophomore season, he wasn't great. But we didn't really build around him at all. It was, uh, I mean, lackluster squad on offense and defense, to be fair. It was, it was pretty poor. Um, third year, we got Tyreek Hill. We got in some O-line help. You know, the defense, we bolstered that up as well. So we started winning games. We're like, to his third year, we, we did well. Um, then the final game, I think we lost 56-26 to Buffalo. And that was, if we won that game, we would have made playoffs. And a lot of people started hating on Tua, going, he's not clutch. You know, he should have won that game, everything. But I still had faith. He had a good, he had a pretty good year. I think we got 10 wins. So, you know, not a bad season at all. Uh, then last year, uh, oh no, fourth fourth year we uh, got one game off the playoffs again. I think we lost to Buffalo yeah. again in the final week. Um, they're definitely our biggest rival. Two has beat Buffalo once in his yeah. like four or five seasons. It's it's not great. That's another factor Finns fans don't like about him. Uh, he can't beat our division rival. Um, yeah, At so least the Jets are in there. Huh? At least the Jets are in there, mate. Oh, yeah. Just... yeah. <laughs> we have, uh, I think we're undefeated against them and the Patriots. Well, two yeah. of us. Uh, the post-Tom uh, Brady Patriots. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Two of them played Tom Brady. Um, but yeah, and then last year, we finally made the playoffs. Um, oh, no, I think we made back-to-back -back playoffs. The last two years, we made playoffs with Tua. So, um to have made the playoffs, but that was his controversial season where he got two or three concussions. Um, so he, he never started in the playoffs. 
And then guess who we played? We played Buffalo, and they uh, they beat us. So first round exit. Then last year, yeah. we uh, two made playoffs, started his first playoff game, uh, and we lost to Kansas City. Um, in fairness, bit of a tough place to go to, even in the best circumstances. And it was like minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that. It was ridiculous. Um, Honestly. We didn't play well at all. At all. Offense was yeah. horrific. Defense, to be fair, I, mean, I think we held Kansas City to 13 points. Or tw- oh, no, I think it was 26. 26 points. Not yeah. terrible against Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes. They were the Super Bowl champions. So defense played pretty well. Two were just, and the whole offense was just terrible. Um, so I don't know about him getting paid 50 million. He doesn't deserve it. He's not, he's not proving it, but, uh, our GM has, uh, confirmed they will be re-signing to her on his fifth year extension, but we'll see, we'll see what kind of deal gets done to be honest. But I don't think he deserves 50 mil at all. He deserves a, a bit of a payday, but not that much. Yeah. I mean, like as an outsider looking in. There's a couple of concerns for me with Tua. It's the concussions. I know they happened in the past, but you know you tend to see a trend with injuries in the NFL. It's like if you pop an Achilles, if you pop an Achilles, your chances of popping the other one goes up significantly. Yeah. Also, he keeps getting beaten by Buffalo apparently, which isn't a good sign. And nope. no your win percentage against top ten NFL opposition is really poor. I don't think you've beaten one. Maybe the Cowboys last season was the only winning team. I think you beat. Literally, yeah. Last season, we only beat bad teams. But we beat the bad teams by like 20, 30 points every time. I mean, we beat Denver by, what, 70 to 21, something like that. So Yeah, that was ridiculous. We can beat up on the bad teams. But yeah, I think Dallas was the only winning record team that we actually ended up beating, which is not great at all. Because it's Dallas, so... Yeah, exactly. It really it's not like they're <laughs> the top teams either. Well, they're kind of the NFC version of you, aren't they, really? <laughs> in terms yeah. of that. And last uh, season, they definitely were. Yeah, I mean, listen, th- another problem with the tour thing is, okay, he probably hasn't earned $50 million, but where else would you go? Kirk Cousins is off the market. I wouldn't recommend him anyway, as a Vikings fan. But... Justin Fields has gone to Pittsburgh. Russell Wilson's gone. Um, you know, you could have arguably said maybe if you could get Wilson on that vet minimum and use the cap space somewhere else. But part of NFL is roster construction. And if you quarterback's the most important position, you're not in a position to draft any, are you? So that's your only option, really. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a point a lot of fans made because some fans are being like, get rid of Tua, don't like him. Can't win clutch games, you know, big games. He's not clutch. But looking, I mean, even if all the QBs you just listed were on the board, I'd still probably pick two over any of them. Maybe Russell Wilson. He started to pick up the end end of his tenure in Denver, but even still, he lost 70 to 21 to two of that same season. So, and the offense is constructed around two of his strengths, you know, quick RPOs. Two of reads the field very well. He's, he's very intelligent, makes quick quick decisions. And that offense is fast. It's it's meant for yeah. him. It's been built the past four years for him. So him and McDaniel have a great connection. Him and Tyreek Hill, Waddle have a great connection. I think we just got to stick with Tua. And it's probably Super Bowl or bust these next couple seasons, really. Just we got to yeah. go all in and see what happens. Yeah, like I agree. Obviously, I'm an outsider. I don't know as much as you. But from what I'm gathering, a bit like Buffalo the last few years, you're in that window where you're paying everyone. You've got a lot of talent. You've got a really good head coach. But eventually you're going to need to start paying more people and there's a cap limit. So do you, do you think, you know, if you, don't, if you don't at least make an AFC championship in the next two years, it's going to have to be re- rebuild time? I... Uh- I don't know. I mean, I mean, look at how many superstars we lost this off season. It was ridiculous. Like seven starters, six of them on defense in the first forty-eight hours of free agency, just gone. And then, well, technically eight if you count Xavier Howard. We're releasing him on the first of June, but he's confirmed yeah. to be going. 
So that's seven starters on defense, just gone from last season. Will Kings, yeah, Andrew yeah, Van Ginkle, Ginkle. Van Ginkle, Brandon Jones at safety. So many like big time players. Um, I mean, it's a shame, but the one thing I would say that's a positive of this is they were pretty much all players that Miami drafted. We built them up, got them in superstars, yeah. and then they became too expensive to keep them. But Miami can draft well. We've proven that. So we yeah. just need a good draft this year, maybe the next year, and hopefully build up that superstar talent again to make another Super Bowl run. But yeah, I mean, we haven't, we've what, two first round exits in the, super, in the playoffs, and that's it. We haven't done anything. You know, we need to prove that we can win a playoff game at least and get somewhere. Yeah. If, if you're the general manager of the Miami Dolphins going into the 2024 draft, what I'll position are you from? <laughs> what, what position are you prioritizing do you think you need the most? Uh, I'd say O-line. I think we've lost our center, so that's an issue we need to address. Uh, I mean, last season he got injured. He was out for the season, like mid-season. And our, our left guard had to play centre. And the first couple of games, it was horrendous. Like, he, he there was fumbles on snaps in the under centre, everything like that. Literally at the goal line, stuff like that. Losing the ball is just not good. So we need, I, I say we draft a centre. Yeah. Or maybe get a cheap one in free agency and hopefully get that position sorted. Wide receiver three. We've got, obviously, Tyreek Hill, Jen Waddle. Um, it seems that it's going the way that the Dolphins are going to try and get another superstar talent at wide receiver three. Um, I mean, we re-signed Braxton Berrios, but he's probably fourth, fifth string receiver. We let Cedric Wilson go, who was our third receiver on the depth chart last year, but he's he's gone. So, and the, the way the reports are coming in, we're going to sign someone big. I mean, Jarvis Landry has been looking at a return um, to Miami. Wow. I would love that. He's Jenna Waddle and Jarvis Andrea are like the same style of player, like quick, agile, you know, making cuts, making people miss. That would just be electric to watch. I know he's not the same player that he was when we drafted him, but still Jarvis Landry, man. So, yeah, I'd say receiver. And then defense, we signed, we, we got the defense back. We'd stole a Jordan Poyer from the Bills. So, lovely. Um, lovely. Yeah, him and Javon Holland back at safeties. That's a deadly combo. Um, I'd say maybe D-line, because we lost Wilkins. We lost Van Ginkoo, who plays uh, sort of linebacker edge kind of role. Yeah, Vikings stole him. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, Chubb and Jaden Phillips, both, I think they've both torn their ACL. They're expected back oh. like November. So if you include right. them in the people we're not going to have like starters last year, there's nine players on defense. That were playing, that were going to start the season last year, and not going to be starting this year. It's a whole new defense, so we'll see how, uh, and a new defensive coordinator. So we'll see how this all comes into shape and how it works out next year. Yeah, because you've lost Vic Fangio, who's gone to Philadelphia, if I'm yeah. right. Yeah, I think so, so. Obviously, like you're completely overhauling one side of the ball. Does that worry you a bit? Because you know you've got a really good offense, but is that defense going to struggle, do you reckon? Or do you think they'll make it up? I don't know. Because our defense started slow last year. Like, really slow. We uh, Offense won games. We're in a lot of shootouts. Um, but towards the end, they started picking up. And then we just got a slew of injuries. It was horrific. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see how training camp looks. See what the draft does. We'll probably draft a few defensive players. Um, yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. But it's a whole, whole basically new group of guys coming in, all brand new to this team. So we'll see how they all end up working together, fitting together, and what scheme the new DC brings in. And we we'll just have to see, really. Just we'll we'll see preseason, I guess. Yeah. I mean, that's what makes the NFL great, though, isn't it? Because you can yeah. have a complete complete overhaul of one side of the ball or an entire team. Like, look at the Texans before last season. You wouldn't have guessed them getting into playoffs, winning a playoff game. Yeah. 
but it happens, you know, so you never know what, what can happen in the NFL. Um, so what for you would be a successful season this year? Would it be winning one playoff game or getting further than that? We got to get further than that, realistically. I'd say AFC Championship is, is probably where we need to be at. I think yeah. fans would be happy if we uh, won a playoff game, got to the divisional round, lost a close game, whatever. I'd say that would satisfy a lot of fans, give us some hope for the next year after that. Um, but realistically, to please please Dolphins fans, AFC Championship or Super Bowl, really. I mean, that's what any fan wants, really. But yeah. it's time. We've been messing about the past three, four years, sort of just being just good enough to get there and sort of dying off at the end of the season. So we need to prove ourselves, really, prove that it's working. Yeah, I know that feeling of just let's just get there and then ah, <laughs> we <Yeah>. fucked up. <laughs> so um, let's talk a bit about your division rivals then, because you've got the Bills, the Patriots, and the Jets. Yep. The the Bills have had a little bit of a similar situation to you, where they've got a pretty pretty damn good offense, but they've lost a lot on defense. What's yeah. your thoughts on them coming up? Do you think you could top the division? Or what do you reckon? I mean, is it close? we were supposed to top it last year, realistically. <laughs> Everyone had us at the top. And we were we were there, I'm pretty sure, the whole whole season until the final week. And uh, we just threw it away. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. Buffalo's kind of screwed, like us. They lost a lot of players on defense. And I haven't seen them rebuild and get the players back that we have. I mean, I'm not an expert on Buffalo, but from what I've seen, we've definitely built better than them. We've got better uh, vets coming in than they do. Uh, yeah. But we'll have to see, man. I mean, I mean, they lost Gabe Davis on offense, but Josh Allen's Josh Allen with Stefan Diggs as well. That's yeah. a tough, tough offense to stop. I reckon they'll definitely be drafting some, some good players. I mean, Buffalo's Buffalo. They own us at the moment. They'll always find yeah. a way to beat us. No matter what, so yeah, they're they're a tough matchup, but I reckon it'll be us two battling for the the division this year again. Okay, so I'm going to throw in a wild card here: the New York Jets. Um, Aaron Rodgers, a, I think a, so. <laughs> a fully a fully healthy one. He's uh, apparently not going to be running uh, alongside Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as vice president. Yeah, I he should be decision. I saw he was contemplating. I didn't see he rejected it. I think uh, someone announced that it's going to be someone political. I don't know, but the, it, it, so it probably means he's going to be the start for the Jets unless he pops the other Achilles. <laughs> yes. So, and they need O line help as well. Do you think the Jets could be? Could it be close? A lot closer this year between the three of you? Yes. Or yeah. even I mean, the Jets, or Jets. They kept it pretty close, and they had Zach Wilson at QB. So let's put it that way. Aaron Rodgers. Uh, a little bit of a step up than Zach Wilson, and just has. I mean, he's an old man now, but still, Aaron Rodgers. He still find a way to win games. So, well, uh, we'll it'll be tough to beat him. It'll be some good matchups with the Dolphins, I reckon. But uh, I don't know. I reckon the Dolphins and Bills are more complete team, completely like yeah. across the board. Um, I don't know. We just got more of that superstar talent, but. You can never count out Aaron Rodgers, really, can you? No, of course. I mean, he's going to go in the Hall of Fame. I, I, I mean, that's pretty clear. And he is a character. But I think one thing we can agree on definitely is that the team that's probably most likely to finish bottom of the division is the New England Patriots, who have yeah. a, hell of a, a hell of a team that needs rebuilding, um, they've got a new coach, Mayo. The Belichick, Belichick era is over, which you're probably glad of. Although it was, it was, it's been fine yeah, the last couple of years. Yeah, um, but they've got the number three overall pick in the draft. They might trade them, maybe with the Vikings, to acquire more picks to rebuild. What do you think about them? Do you think they're going to be tough, better, or it's going to be easy? They're in shambles at the moment. I mean. They are, and I'm happy about it. They've had their 20 years, whatever, of success. Tom Brady, Bill Belichick. It's time for them to suck for a bit. 
I think the whole whole other thirty one other teams can agree on that. They've had their yeah. their fun in the sun. Um so they can finish bottom for a few years. I don't mind that. Um, but yeah, um, new head coach, brand new, never been a head coach before. Ex player. Um Youngest yeah. in the league. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's uh got a tough job ahead of him. Especially QB situation. They've only got Zappy on the roster at the moment. He uh I don't mind Zappy, but he's not a star. He's a he's a QB two. He's a solid QB two, but yeah, I don't reckon he's gonna get you to the Super Bowl or even playoffs. They're they're gonna have to draft someone, I reckon. Now whether they drop back and trade with the Vikings, like you say, uh, maybe so. re- rebuild for a year and then try and go after a QB in the next draft. Well, we'll just have to see, I guess. But yeah, I don't, I don't see them being that way yeah. in the next few seasons, really. Because I, I think their new general manager or chief tech, something like this, I saw. He was at the Packers when they drafted Aaron Rodgers. He was at the Browns when uh, they drafted Baker Mayfield. So he's kind of been in situations where they've drafted a quarterback without having the team around it for that quarterback to succeed. Rogers did, but eventually. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people are thinking he's going to learn from those and drop down and, you know, maybe, I don't know, they need pretty much every position, don't they? So getting two picks in the first round. <laughs> I mean, Devontae Parker, ex-Dolphin, is uh, their probably wide receiver one. I saw a stat the last four, I think, was years. He's finished last, literally dead last, in for receivers for separation from their DB uh, opposite him. So, you know, I mean, he's a great, great jumble specialist, but dead last in separation for four years running is a, is pretty poor. So, for that to be a wide receiver one, it's not an ideal, um, not an ideal situation for a rookie QB to be coming into, or any QB to be honest. So. <laughs> Yeah, they, they they need to just completely rebuild the next two years. It looks like they are doing that, but yeah, they're they're, they're not going to be great anytime soon. No, I agree because like you're coming off two dynasties really over twenty years with Belichick. Yeah. It's a bit like uh, for an English context, you know, Alex Ferguson when he left Manchester United. It might take a few years of struggle before you're back to where you once were. So I know you're probably sick of talking about your rivals, so. Back to the Dolphins. You've been to Dolphins games in London, haven't you, to see them? Yeah, yeah. How were they? Yeah, um, amazing. I've been to two. Um, I think it was 2017. I saw the Dolphins versus the Saints. Uh, Wembley. We lost a 20-0. <laughs> so, what a great first experience to watch the Dolphins. No. Um, didn't see them score a single point. Not even a field goal. Um and then still in 2021, I think, uh, versus the Jags in Tottenham, I believe. And uh, we lost literally last second field goal, 23 to 20. And the annoying thing was, uh, it was when Brian Flores was head coach. Uh, the game was, game was tied 2020. It was fourth and like 20 or something. And they were just going to um, literally just kneel, go to overtime. And then Brian Flores called a timeout. Trevor Lawrence, I think it was his rookie season. They hadn't won a game. The Jags hadn't won a single game all year. And uh, in the timeout, rookie QB went to his head coach and was like, can we run so-and-so play? Oh, no, that was it. They were going to run a play. And uh, and then they decided to go for like a 58-yard field goal, something like that, and uh, kicked it. So, <laughs> I mean, it was a fantastic game to watch back and forth. It was, it was brilliant, but... Just on the wrong side of it, really. So uh, you're just waiting for that first win in a live game now. Yeah, my um, it's it's a really good atmosphere, isn't it? In the UK. Oh, yeah. Everyone's got no matter who's playing, everyone's got their own team's jerseys. Um, it's uh, it's really good, and it's becoming more popular internationally as well. Brazil, yeah. and, uh, Brazil and Spain are going to be hosting some yeah. games. That that be insane. You... Both of those countries, their fans. But, I mean, they're massive, in, especially Brazil. Those games are going to be electric. Yeah. I, I, mate, like, they've already got the UK, UK, Germany, now Spain and Brazil. Uh, I, I, these are outside of America. Yeah, could you could you see eventually their 
being a, a division of outside of America teams being created because they call it the World Championship, but it's just American teams, obviously. Yeah. A bit like the World Series. Could you see that happening? I think so. I think I remember watching a clip a couple of years ago, Roger Goodell doing a interview, and someone asked him about the you know idea of a European league. I'm pretty sure he said they got two teams planned for England when it eventually happens, one in Germany, and they hadn't decided on the fourth. But people was thinking Italy or Spain, and now with a game going on in Spain this this year or next year, next season. Uh, it's 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 going to happen eventually. But he said uh, the thing that was holding it back was the transport, the jet lag, because an eight-hour flight, yeah. probably you know maybe one or two hours more to Germany. Um, that's a long flight. Players get jet lagged. So to have a game where you know have a team game every week or every other week in London, uh, players aren't going to like that. So I think there's going there's plans for like a new Concord style plane or. Right? London to New yeah. York in under three hours. So I'm pretty sure you're saying when that comes into reality, then they can start talks about a European League. But I, I mean, it would be great to see. It would be amazing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I personally would want one in Birmingham on the West Midlands. <laughs> yeah. um, and there's a, ch- there's a chance, you know, if we're talking about football links, Tom Brady is investing in Birmingham yeah. City. They're going to be looking to build a new stadium, apparently within a couple of years maybe they make it an nfl compatible pitch like spurs you know with tom brady being the face of that yeah. you could have one in birmingham one in london so the middle of the country in the capital and then like you said germany and spain or brazil maybe yeah 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 so uh i i hope so i, I mean it, i will still be a vikings fan even if there's an english team yeah. that someone can support them but I think it would be really interesting to see how that would work. I think that's the problem, though. Like, all the fans that already exist in these countries, <clears throat> like, if their Birmingham team did pop up, I would still be a Dolphins fan. I wouldn't yeah. change. I mean, I'd probably have a soft spot for that Birmingham team just because it's local. I'd probably go watch it, but I wouldn't ever give up the Dolphins. And I get that's the problem I see with it. It's just you'd have to get a load of new fans building interest in it for them to fill out like stadiums like with your own fans that's the problem Uh, yeah i I agree like because i think you'd have to get new fans entering the market and then they'd pick those teams yeah anyone established will already have a team and i don't think most will switch unless maybe you're a jets cardinals fan or something like that then maybe but um yeah, I, I it could it could be a, that could be a problem with the international plan. Yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah, man, it, it is growing. Like I say, I mean, I didn't know before I started that there was a British American Football League. Um, no, neither. And you know, we'll see where it goes in a couple of years. We've got an NFL academy in Loughborough. It's developing over here. Yeah, it's soon. It's mostly growing internationally. It's the I think it's the biggest growing it's the biggest growing sport in the UK right now. You know, I see loads of people like out with NFL hats on now. A couple of years ago, you wouldn't have seen it. Um, so yeah, man. Like, what what what's your thoughts on it in the UK? Do you hope it grows more? Yeah, of course, of course. Just as as big as it can get, it it'll be and be brilliant. You know, just keep growing. More people coming into it, more money gets invested. The bigger it grows, more teams. It'd just be, be brilliant. Yeah, man, I agree. Like, it is a brilliant sport. And the one thing that annoys me more than anything is when I get told, oh, "It's the same as rugby, isn't it?" <laughs> yeah. Do you get that a lot? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I and I play both now. Uh, American football mainly, but rugby kind of on the side. I play the odd game here in college, but um, yeah, it's it's completely different sport. The only similarity really is you tackle people and the ball's similarly shaped. You know, apart from that, the rules are just they're they're, they're not really alike. Really, once you get to like know both of the sports, you kind of see that they're they're not anything really alike. 
Yeah, like for starters, you, you can't pass forwards in rugby. I'm not an expert on it, but I know that much. Yeah. And that's the whole point of an offence in American football. So go forward, yeah, yeah. Um, and and I always get this: Why do you guys wear pads and helmets? Rugby players don't. But then if you the video you're on about earlier, hardest hits watching the NFL. If you watch them, imagine them without pads and helmets. <laughs> A lot of people be dying. <laughs> it's, I mean, the the rules in rugby are a lot stricter on tackling. Uh, I think they used to be just like below the shoulders, then it became armpit, and I think now it's nipple. So you know, it's just getting lower and lower and lower. NFL is anywhere as long as it's not head to head contact. Pretty much, that's all in the back. That's about it yeah. on tackling, really. So the hits are a lot wilder, a lot harder. And because the pads sort of give you a false sense of security, people just fly into each other. They go, oh, the pads will save me and send the other guy flying, you know. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, because we know because we've played it. It still hurts with the pads. Oh, yeah. It's not I, like... I've been injured more playing American football, being tackled than, than rugby because the pads are hard. Like, rugby is flesh on flesh. There's a bit of impact absorbed, but American football, it's it's... Hard on hard, so it, it it's a hard impact. It is, man. And you, like with American football, because you got the adrenaline going as well, you don't realise the pain, the bruises, the cuts you're in until most likely the day after or a few hours later. Like the pads doesn't stop it. The pads make sure you don't break your neck, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, like if for anyone watching who does question that, go on YouTube, type in NFL hardest hit. What's that? Then imagine it without pads, <laughs> and then tell me anyone who'd be willing to play that <laughs> sport. <laughs> yeah, man. So, want to ask a couple more Dolphins related questions because this is a Miami Dolphins yeah. episode. So, in your t- obviously Marino's probably the Dolphins go, but in your time watching, who is your favorite Miami Dolphins player? It doesn't have to be now. It can be since you started. Favorite of all time, Jarvis Landry. Okay, that's the first jersey I got. We went to see him in uh, see the Dolphins in London versus the Saints. Uh, just an electric player, man. He's just his shiftiness. It's just agility. It's his rookie rookie season. Couple seasons after that, he was amazing. I'm, I'm really sad we let him go. And then the Browns. He he wasn't the same player. And then. I think he played on the Saints uh, last year or the year before, and he just wasn't the same. It's a bit sad, but still an electric player. Like, don't get me wrong, but his first few seasons they were just amazing to watch. He was, he was brilliant as a Dolphins fan. Yeah, no wonder you want to bring him back as wide receiver three. I can understand that, man. Like, yeah, sometimes you have a soft spot for a player. Yeah, um, yeah. For me, Harrison Smith at the Vikings, he's just signed his 13th year. It's not always the best player. Sometimes it's the loyalty and all that. So, yeah, Jarvis Landry is your favourite player. What's your favourite favorite Miami Dolphins game you've ever watched? I think it might be uh, the Ravens game 2022, I think. Um, third week of the season. We've gone 2-0. and the Ravens are also 2-0. and uh, And literally, it was my dad's 60th birthday, the day before the game. Well, yeah, the Saturday. We uh, climbed up Ben Nevis on his birthday, middle of the night. Came back down in the morning, about 7 a.m. Um, drove home, was awake all day. And I was literally, like, falling asleep. You know, I've been up for hours climbing up Ben Nevis. And I'm like, I've got to stay up, got to watch the Dolphins game. We go down like what twenty eight to seven, and it's in the fourth quarter. Thirteen minutes to go, I think it's twenty eight to seven. Um, yeah. My dad's my dad's stopped watching. He's like, oh, I can't be bothered to watch this anymore. I was like, now nah, I have faith. You know, I I always think it's, it's I never faith, man. And then uh, I think two two hits Jasicki the back of the end zone on like third and thirteen or something like that. And you know, it's twenty eight fourteen, about twelve minutes to go, and I'm like. There's still time, you know, two touchdowns. It's not it's not out of the question. I think we score, I think it's a Tyreek Hill, like, deep touchdown. So I'm like, 28-21, yeah. 
you know. And then the Ravens score it's thirty five uh, twenty one on kind of a bit like mm, you know, there's there's times running out. And then two hits Tyreek again, deep bomb, length of the field. Um so it's thirty five twenty eight. I've got faith. And then uh he hits Waddle for a touchdown. Uh, so it's a tight tie game. The Ravens go down the field, score a field goal, so it's thirty eight thirty five. I think there's like under two minutes to go. Tua leads a game-winning drive, scores a touchdown to Waddle again, and we won the game. So that, that was probably the most electric game I've seen. To come back from that deficit, I think it was the largest fourth-quarter comeback ever, most points. Um, so, yeah, that, that was pretty special to watch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, th- those close games, although they're brilliant if you win them, they're so stressful at the time. I mean, I remember the um, Vikings versus Bills game. Uh, I think it was 2022. 20, 20, 20, yeah, 2022. Mate, I, I was so tense the entire game. Afterwards, it's a relief and you enjoy it, but during it, you, you can't no, enjoy no, it. In the game because we needed the Bills to lose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think did Justin Jefferson make that like one handed grab to like get the first down or something like that on fourth down. Yeah, it was fourth and eighteen. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And obviously he needed that or the game was over and one handed brought yeah. it in. I didn't think he caught it at first, and then the replay was just insane. I mean he's a special player. Yeah. I hope we extend him, but <laughs> Yeah, you too, definitely. I mean one thing we have in similar the Vikings and Dolphins is we probably have the top two wide receivers in the league. People can argue whichever way, but they're both brilliant. Yeah. Tyreek and yeah. Jay. Um, so, you know, we got to use them. Um, and the quarterback situation at both teams has been a little bit uncertain at times. It still is for us. It, you're probably going to commit to us. So, you know, hopefully... You make something of it. Yeah, you know? I hope so. You know, since I've known you, we've been close, but not quite We're there. there. We're getting there. We just need to get over the hump and win a playoff game, really. Yeah. So, another thing I want to bring up is me and Taylor, we went to the Jags versus Broncos NFL game in 2022, was it October? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, we saw something shocking that most people didn't get to see, not even in America. We saw Russell Wilson win. Uh, <laughs> what was your thoughts on that game? Oh, it was a really good game, actually. Uh, I think the Broncos were down in you know, half time. <laughs> half <Yeah>. time. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, and then we saw Russell Wilson, a comeback win. Pretty rare, pretty rare thing to see, especially at Den- well, Denver anyway. Um, yeah. But yeah, that, that was a that was a really good game to watch. To be fair, the atmosphere was brilliant. Yeah, man, it was it was it was really fun. Like I, I met, we met some Broncos fans, and they were lovely. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. good. Yeah, they were, and it's really it's really good getting like the American perspective. Apparently, they watch all our shows, British TV shows like Dan Abbey, and we watch American shows on Netflix. <laughs> So yeah, maybe maybe the, maybe NFL become more popular here and football over there. <laughs> I know, I know. So, um, there. There, you uh, what? Rugby's growing in the states a lot because American football. You either make it in college and then you make it to the the league, or there there aren't like any clubs like there are here. So you kind of make it or you never play again. Um, but so a lot of rugby clubs are starting to be set up because like people still want to play a contact sport, you know, in their twenties and thirties, but there isn't an option. So rugby's kind of growing for people to continue that contact on. I think America's hosting the twenty thirty one Rugby World Cup, so okay. they're, they're trying to like massively encourage the sport to grow it and get a decent team out there. That'll be interesting as I could see Americans being really good at rugby because the fundamentals of American football and rugby, although the game's not exactly the same, the things you learn can be used in the other sport. So, I mean, we've seen it, like, guys we know who played rugby before and then they've come to the Steelers or the Vipers and they've done really well because they've got that base skill set. 
Yeah, yeah. well, probably better than people just who like interest in football and starting out because they've got the fundamentals, like you say, of tackling and passing the ball. Although it's not the same, it's still ball skills, you know, like how to how to hold a ball and how to secure it and everything. So, just yeah, definitely the sports have, you know, interlinking qualities that are like useful in both. So, if you've played a contact sport before, it definitely helps to transfer over. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it'll, and it'll be interesting to see how um, you know rugby develops in America because sports aren't they're not unique to their own country. It's a global thing, you yeah. know, and different different sports are developing in different places. So yeah. So, good. Ask one last thing. So for anyone who may want to play American football in Britain, uh, UK, Ireland. What advice would you? What advice would you give them going into it? And you know, do you think it's a good thing for them to try? Yeah, yeah, of course. Any, I mean, not even just football. Just any team sport is brilliant to get into. Like the friends you made, like you know, me and you, um, and just, just, it's just a great place to be. You know, just on a team, team sport. Um, just the camaraderie you get from it, and like you get fit while having fun. It's just a great thing to do in general. And football specifically, I mean, the experience I've had, like Vipers and Steelers now, like there hasn't been anyone who's been horrible. Everyone's been super chill, just nice people. Everyone gets along, has a laugh. You know, we all talk outside of the team, like outside of training. Like it's just a, a good thing to do. And like if you're unsure about it, just go down to your local club, wherever that is, and give it a go. You know, like you're, you're only one way to find out what it's like and, you know, it might change your life, change my life. It's taken over my life, but I'm not complaining about that. Yeah, there there are dozens of teams playing at under sixteens, under nineteens, women's and men's adult teams. So if anyone's interested in joining up, look up for local American football teams in your area because most likely there is one or one close by and give it a go because it is growing, it's becoming more popular. And you never know the people you like Taylor said, you never know the people you're gonna meet. Um what path it may take you down, it might get you closer to the NFL. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely do it. So, I'm going to ask you to end on the, this Dolphins episode representing the fans. I want to ask, what's your record prediction for this season and how far, how far do you think you can go? Uh, I reckon 17 no. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> I don't know. I reckon 11, 12 wins, I'd be happy. I wouldn't mind that. Okay. I'll go 12 and 5. That should be the target, really. That should, okay. should be enough to maybe win the division. Um, I'd say, yeah. hopefully. Um, maybe even get a first first seed in the playoff. I mean, we were first seed for a while during mid-season, and we kind of just yeah. fell off at the end. So if we can get over, over that hill and just get there, win a playoff game. I I, I reckon most fans will be happy, but... The real target should be AFC Championship or Super Bowl, really. That's that's where yeah. we sh- need to be aiming for, we need to be getting to. So, so there we go. We'll put you on the record. 12-5 and five is Taylor's Miami Dolphins prediction and AFC Championship minimum, yeah? Yeah, should be. Well, what, mate, that was a great first episode representing the fans. Like I said at the beginning to anyone watching, if you support a team that's not Miami, Drop, a, drop us a message on our Instagram, in the YouTube comments, get in contact, we'll do a video like this, we'll talk about it, and if you want to get involved in one of your local teams, check them out, because it is a brilliant experience. Please like, subscribe, it'll help us out massively as we're trying to grow this UK American football community. Taylor, thank you for coming on, mate, it's really appreciated. No, thanks very much for having me, it's been brilliant. Right, I am your host Ali, this is Otapun, have a great day.